Hey guys, I know I'm getting to this a little bit late. Uh, it's kind of difficult for me to get this sort of thing together. I'm not really much for talking about my own builds. I could probably give advice and critiques for other builds, but the builds that I play with are ones that I get comfortable with over such a long period of time that it's kind of difficult to, uh, to dig into them and actually extract what I like about them. Detriments, the things that the builds struggle with, that's a little bit easier to do. But uh, just detailing the basics of a build, the intent that it has, uh, the sort of thought process behind the build, as well as what the benefits are of that build, uh, that's uh, a little bit more difficult to do. Anyways, this is Jarvis. He was originally intended to be a, a dexterity focus build, uh, almost entirely just dexterity, vitality, and endurance. This is originally going to be a throwaway build. I didn't expect the build to have any success whatsoever. My initial Dark Souls character was a dexterity focused build, however it was very poorly built and I was kind of put off by the experience. Honestly I couldn't remember much about what I had done for Demon Souls, so while the gameplay was still pretty familiar, all of the tight uh, muscle memory and play skill uh, that I had, as well as the thought process behind my character as I was building him, uh, it did not transfer over from Demon Souls whatsoever. So I had to take some time with my next characters to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, first decision I made was not to do a dexterity focused build. So with that in mind, I ended up doing an H. His name was Galium, and he had spent a lot of time in the forest, invading at extremely low levels. This was back when Dark Souls had just been released, so you didn't see a lot of the cheaper tactics or gang squads that we see today. Galium at low levels was designed for a sort of guerrilla warfare. Lots of item usage, spell usage, the occasional use of an enchanted shortbow. Most of the battles in the forest actually took about a half an hour, especially versus multiple opponents. Because there is no upper cap for forest invasions, I tended to invade a lot of high level players, so I had to really work at it to get any kills in. Eventually I leveled up Galium quite a bit. He hit level 135. He ended up having a mix of faith and intelligence as well as just enough strength and dexterity to wield the Moonlight Butterfly Horn and the Moonlight Greatsword. The reason why he had both faith and intelligence was because the build existed pre-1.05. This is where Tranquil Walk of Peace, the Crystal Ring Shield, and the Dragon Head Glitch, um, and a lot of other bugs, Strong Magic Shield, were pretty prevalent, and uh, any spellcasting options that I could make available to myself uh, really helped out a lot. The build was never really meant to use any melee weapons. It was originally built for the purpose of being a pure caster. And not just a caster, but a glass cannon. It was designed to hit as hard as possible from a distance, but it wasn't designed to take any damage. Eventually I decided to experiment with another build. Just a short-lived one-hit KO build. It was a plus five lightning's y -hander. It was designed exclusively for backstabs and parries. It was very much a Fisher build. It didn't really have any dimension to it at all, uh, nor did it use anything uncommon. It was entirely giant's armor, y -hander. Dark Wood Green Ring, Ring of Favor and Protection. I almost exclusively used it for Dark Anor Londo. It didn't get a lot of use outside of that. I eventually did get back to doing the Dexterity build, and yes, as I said before, it was entirely designed to be a throwaway. Even down to the character's appearance, I did not expect to make an iconic character at all. I wanted him to look downtrodden, I wanted him to look kind of angry at the world, and maybe kind of frustrated and upset with everything. I wanted it to look like he himself knew that the bill wasn't going to work out. So I ended up making a character that we ended up dubbing Babyface Jarvis. He's pretty much my primary build, uh, mostly due to his rapier usage. I became really comfortable with the weapon. So anyways, let's get to the build. First up is the PlayStation 3 incarnation of Jarvis. He is a soul level 125 wanderer. He has 1590 health and 192 stamina. His stats are as follows, 40 vitality, 16 Attunement, 40 Endurance, 16 Strength, 40 Dexterity, 12 Resistance, 36 Intelligence, 8 Faith. His primary armor set was the Mask of the Child, a Silver Knight armor, Giant's Gauntlets, and Giant's Leggings. His rings are the Ring of Favor and Protection and the Dark Wood Grain Ring. Jarvis also has an alternative armor set. This one is more for style than for performance. It consists of the Pharisee's Hat, the Painting Guardian chest piece, no gloves, and the giant's leggings. Remove the dark wood grain ring and add the wolf ring and you end up with 61 poise. His primary weapons are a plus 15 Ricard's rapier for when using crystal magic weapon, Velka's rapier for when not using enchants, a lightning avalon with lightning bolts, the silver knight shield, and the isolate catalyst. His primary spells were great soul arrow, 
Soul Spear, and Crystal Magic Weapon. Regarding some of the advantages of the build, Jarvis had an excellent weapon selection with pyromancies, mage gear, fast and slow weapons, spears, and so on. He had pretty strong pokes with a plus 15 Ricard's Rapier and Crystal Magic Weapon, especially the R2. He has a little bit more stamina on the PS3 than he does on the 360, due to the Ring of Favor and Protection. He also has one more attunement slot than Xbox 360 Jarvis. Outside of critical attacks such as backstabs and parries, PlayStation 3 Jarvis generally does a lot more damage than on the 360. Unlike the Xbox 360 equivalent, PlayStation 3 Jarvis isn't nearly as good at 3 vs 1s, especially as battles get longer and spells run out. He also deals very little damage with his backstabs and parries. One of the other disadvantages of PlayStation 3 Jarvis is that he has to switch out his weapons much more often for peak effectiveness. This could be difficult on the Xbox 360 controller, as it's difficult to move and switch weapons at the same time. In addition, the Xbox 360 D-pad tends to lean on the diagonals, which could result in undesired weapon, spell, and item switches. PlayStation 3 Jarvis is also slightly overleveled, being level 125 rather than 120, which is the accepted PvP standard. A quick fix for this would be to reduce his dexterity by 5. After some prodding from viewers in the stream, as well as my own personal interest, I ended up purchasing the 360 version of Dark Souls. I had become so accustomed to Jarvis on the PlayStation 3 that I decided that he had to be my first character on the Xbox 360. I did, however, decide to make a few changes to the build. With this update to Jarvis, I wanted to capitalize on the raw essence of a high critical rapier build. In doing so, I discarded as many stats as I thought were necessary at the time. This build ended up as follows. 1,526 health. 160 Stamina, 53 Vitality, 14 Attunement, 69 Endurance, 16 Strength, 20 Dexterity, 12 Resistance, 11 Intelligence, and 8 Faith. The primary armor set for this incarnation of Jarvis is as follows. The Mask of the Child, Paladin Armor, Havel's Gloves, and Havel's Leggings. They provide 76 Poise. It's pretty good for the build's consistent close quarters combat, where you can't afford to be staggered with a stray hit. This build abandoned the Ring of Favor and Protection, and instead switched to the Hornet Ring. Its second ring slot is still occupied by the Dark Woodgrain Ring, for additional mobility. The primary weapons for Jarvis on the Xbox 360 are as follows. A Lightning or Chaos Ricard's Rapier, a Lightning Avalon with Lightning Bolts, a Silver Knight Shield, and an unupgraded Pyromancy Flame. The Flame isn't upgraded due to use of Power Within and other Pyromancies that don't benefit from an upgraded Flame. Acid Surge and Poison Mist are mostly used for zoning, although Acid Surge is great against low durability weapons. Power Within is pretty important. The extra damage from Power Within can often turn nearly killing an enemy to a one-hit KO. This is especially important when fighting multiple enemy players. In those situations, every backstab or parry needs to do as much damage as possible. It's not as useful in a one vs one or in a prolonged fight. As far as items are concerned, Jarvis generally carries three items. Humanity for healing. It's not meant to be used very often, but it can help to get out of sticky situations. He also carries Lloyd's talismans, but they're very sparingly used. It's difficult to use them when fighting more than one player at a time. Jarvis also carries green blossoms, but they're only used when you need a lot of mobility. Like Jarvis in the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 Jarvis has excellent set of parries, easy prying for mistakes, he can attack while blocking, He's always close enough for easy backstabs, and he uses a less conventional weapon that players may not know how to fight. Xbox 360 Jarvis also has a few additional advantages. He generally has lower weapon weight, a longer kick range on his backstabs, which is great for knocking people off of cliffs. Due to his high critical damage, he's great for fighting multiple enemy players. Jarvis does have a few major disadvantages. He's not particularly great at fighting off katana users, especially when they're used two-handed. He's not particularly great at countering backstab fissures. Careful spear users who keep their distance are difficult to approach. With any weapon a chance, especially Dark Moon Blade, you generally have to wait for that to wear off. Jarvis isn't particularly great at fighting enchanted weapons up close. Outside of backstabs and parries, Jarvis' weapon damage is actually pretty low. Xbox 360 Jarvis has a pretty limited weapon selection. He doesn't benefit from the same scaling that PlayStation 3 Jarvis has. Also, due to Xbox 360 Jarvis' high reliance on criticals, he'll probably be frowned upon in honor duels and tournaments. And there you have it. Both current incarnations of Jarvis. For more detailed information on these builds, please see the description on this video. Once again, thanks for watching, and for more videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.